it's about Tech Training Thursdays, come join the ride With our tech team leading, we'll take it a stride Every week's an adventure, we're ready to thrive Tech Training Thursdays, where learning's alive Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we have a special presenter for you, Stephanie Alfaro. She's our CIT at Fidias Elementary, and she's going to share uh, about chatbots and how she uses them in her classroom. So Stephanie, we're glad you're here with us today. Go ahead and take it away. Okay, thank you, Debbie Hall. Um... Debbie mentioned I am going to be presenting on the different types of chat boxes available. Before I start, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. So these are the chat boxes that I'm going to go over today, which is Chat GPT Copilot. Oh, I can't even. I, I can't pronounce it, but I know what it is. <laughs> Rhina, right? And Gemini. So I as Debbie mentioned, I'm Stephanie Alparo. I'm a fourth grade bilingual teacher at Stephanie Farias, and I believe this is going to be my third year as the CIT. So a quick quote that I wanted to share, since we are going to be talking about AI and everyone saying that AI is going to take over, but honestly, I, it's an amazing tool, but it won't take our job. So technology will never replace great teachers, but in the hands of great teachers, it's transformational. And I love that quote, and I always share it with my, with my coworkers. And before I start, I do like to take a, a, a quick poll of how the audience feels with AI. So if you can, in the chat, those of you that are here, can you just put if you're, and let me type the question on the chat as well your experience with with AI, if you're at a zero, one, or three, like level zero is not that much experience. Level one is you kind of know about, and then level three is that you've worked with it multiple times. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. We have two. Yes, Via, I know you're at a two. <laughs> Via's our librarian. <laughs> and Ms. Gonzalez. Okay. Okay, so then I will go, I will try to slow down because um, I, I always try to explain everything super fast since I feel like everyone's comfortable with it, but then, you know, okay. So feel free to stop me or ask questions whenever, whenever you would like. So these are the three topics that we're gonna talk about. So I will I mention the AI tools that are available for us, how a teacher can use them, and then I will share some student products at the end. So these are the chat, bot, chat bots that we're going to be talking about, ChatGBT, Rhina, Copilot, and Gemini. So ChatGBT is, um, it's a website by itself, or how can I explain, AI, an AI by itself. Mag, Rhina is with Magic School AI, Copilot is with Microsoft, and then Gemini is Google. And all of these are linked. I believe we, we will be sharing this later on. So if you want to go back and explore them yourself, just click on the on this right here and it will take you to chat ChatGPT and and so on. So um, I am gonna go through each one one by one and explain a little bit on how an educator can use it. But all of these chatbot chatbots, you can use it for so many things um, outside of uh, teaching as well but it's a very great tool for us. So ChatGPT, and I won't explain everything because I know it's a lot of wording, but these are the main things that a teacher can use ChatGPT for. So it has uh, lesson planning, resource creation, writing assistance, answering questions, discussion facilitation, tutoring, language learning, incorporating technology, professional development, feedback, and assessment. And I actually got this information through ChatGPT. So I asked ChatGPT, uh, how can a teacher use ChatGPT? And this is all, um, all, all ChatGPT information. <laughs> but 
it did explain a lot more, so I didn't have to cut it down, but um, this is it. And let me show you how I actually did it. So I'm gonna go to ChatGPT. Once you're there, you do have to sign in through Google if you haven't done so yet. And this is the this is the, the page. This is how it looks. Let me okay, here we go. This is how it looks. So you start typing here in the bottom in this little bar. Our engine search engine, I think it's called. And since I already did some uh, ChatGPT prompting, my oh, first you have to log in. My my previous ChatGPT questions or anything that I had had already asked is saved. Let me just log in really quick. So this is what I've used ChatGPT for, and it does save it, which I like. And this is what I mean. This was the question that I asked ChatGPT. How can teachers use ChatGPT? And this is what it came up with. So it's a lot of good information. But um, as you can see, you could use it for so many more, for so many other reasons. But I will go through that a little bit more ahead. And then Rhina, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, is part of Magic School AI. So Magic School AI is more for educational uh, like it's it's for educational um, purposes. So it's it's actually designated for teachers and students. So Magic School AI uh, is for teachers, and then they also have Magic School AI students. And in Magic School AI, so if I go in there, you do have to log in and then go through Google. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, but I've, I've already done it, so it shows this screen right here. So I'm in Magic School AI, and this is Reina, the chatbot. And again, this little prompt that's here in my presentation, I, I got it straight from, from Reina. So they're, they're little assistants. They help you with everything and anything that you could think of. So if you're st stuck in a... Um, presentation, use AI. <laughs> it will help you. So this is Reina. It's very similar to ChatGPT. Right here, you would type your question or uh, anything you need assistance with. But like I said, um, Magic School AI is designated for, for teachers and, and students to use. So it, it is more teacher friendly. And I won't go that much detail into Magic School AI because I know there's other trainings, but these are the there's so many tools that we can use for uh, as an AI assistant, and I love it. I love Magic School AI is my, my favorite. <laughs> I do use it often. Let me see very quickly if there's any questions. OK, I don't see any questions. So I'm going to keep on going. Um, back to the presentation. And then there's Copilot. Copilot is a, it's a software within Microsoft. Again, it's another great tool. All of them basically do the same thing. So I'm not gonna read through this, but um, it is an advanced uh, assistant for us. And then we have Gemini. Gemini, I'm not that familiar with, but I know I've seen it in my phone. Um, and I know that it's part of Google. It is blocked in our in our school computer, so I can't show you. But it is linked in case you want to in case you want to see it um, outside of school grounds, I guess. <laughs> but again, it's another tool, and um, I used most of them uh, to help me with my lesson planning and so on and tutoring for so many things. But uh, Gemini is also a good one. So I do want, I did want to share how I use it and then how my students use it. But before that, I do want to share this PSJ AI prompt. It's, it's a little prompt to help us remember how to ask AI because you do have to be very specific. The more specific that you are, the better um, answers that you'll get. So this is what was shared with us. And the literal acronym is PSJA, so we could remember. 
So when, when you're prompting AI, make sure that it has a purpose. So you have to clarify the objective of the task or output. Uh, the speaker, so identify who is it for. Justify the length, so determine the length of the output and then audience. So state the target audience to tailor the content accordingly and then add your teats. So like I said, I do use um, AI a lot. So it helps me so much, especially this um, this year with all the new curriculums for from Eureka and science. And then the, I feel like this year there's so many new things and it's a little bit overwhelming and AI has been a great help. I've used it um, this year for lesson planning, especially for lesson planning with Eureka. I know we love Eureka, but I still, <laughs> I'm still getting used to it and um, it's helped me. And then my students have used it, not this year yet, but last year we did use it throughout the year. So I do wanna share a very good example that I did earlier on, and you could do this in any chat box. You could use ChatGPT, uh, Copilot, or Magic School AI, but the one that I used was Copilot. So I do wanna share how I used it. So I'm gonna go back to Copilot. Like I said, it, it it should be linked. So if you click on it, it will take you to the to Copilot. Let me double check. I think you had to be in presentation mode, um, the slideshow mode for the links to work on your side, Stephanie. Oh, I'm not sure if I put it on on this one, but I, it is up here. So I I I, I shared it down. And then I'll double check the links before we send it out. So this is Copilot. And I'm not sure if it saves the previous things that I've done because I, I, I have used it before. Mm, I'm not seeing it. Okay, but let me show you. So what I did for Copilot, I asked them to help me create questions for math. So I had five questions for math and then on the skill that we were doing right now. So since, like I said, Eureka is very different and we're not used to it, I'm still getting used to it. I, I asked AI to help me to come up with star aligned questions since, and I'm not trying to be mean to Eureka, but Eureka is not star aligned. So I was having trouble coming up with those questions and I asked AI to help me. So I put in the prompt, uh, create five questions. for my fourth grade students using this TIC. And then I, I looked for my TIC and I'm gonna have to look for it again. Let me find it really quick. So I'm gonna look for the math fourth grade TICs. And for Eureka right now, we are doing addition, subtraction, uh, um, rounding, and comparing numbers. We're doing all of that in this past two weeks. <laughs> so I'm gonna go, uh, I found my TIC, uh, which is addition and subtraction, 4.1b, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to Copilot and put 4.1b, let me double check. Yes, so it is 4.1b. I copied the T, so I'm gonna paste it. And let's see if it comes up with the questions. It came up with really good questions right now. So create five questions for my fourth grade students using this T. I'm gonna submit it and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it looks a little bit different. And that's, uh, that's another thing with AI. Sometimes you'll put the same prompt uh, the first time and then the second time you put the same prompt and it comes up with something different. 
So in Copilot, I'm noticing that it doesn't save your previous responses, so I would copy them. But I know in ChatGPT it does save it, and Magic School AI, I believe it also saves it. And let's look at the questions. So these are, I see this is question one, two, three, four, and five. So one thing that I did not specify was how the length of the number. So in fourth grade, we do go up to the millions period, sorry, billions period, but we only add up to the thousands period. So I'm gonna edit, or I don't even have to edit. Actually, I could just continue. I could continue my, my response here and ask them, can you make those same questions, but with, with the six digit number? And the reason that I did that is because in fourth grade and the start test, they're not gonna ask you to add 24 plus six. And I always tell my kids that they're not gonna ask you to add small numbers Usually when you see a start question with larger numbers, that's when they know that they have to either add or subtract. And if you notice, it did it did go up to a little bit bigger. And just like that, I have my five questions. So I would look through them, double check them. And if I don't like one, I will ask again and they keep on coming up with more and more. So this is Copilot. Like I did say, the one that was a little bit more teacher friendly was Magic School AI. And then I've had really good, um, really good questions with ChatGBT as well. Any questions before I move on? I don't see any questions. OK, so so I I did want to share also how my students have used it. Um, they used it last year for the sustainability project. Those of you that are here, do you remember those projects that we did last year? <laughs> um, yes, okay. So those uh, if you remember last year, um, the, the projects that we did, it was it was a lot. It did take us about three weeks to finish them. And so you could imagine having 20 kids working on that project and one teacher. So that's why I had the help of AI and it was a tremendous help. So I didn't have to go one by one going, um, the kids having to ask me so many questions, um, I asked, I told them to use Magic School AI for students. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go on this image here. Let me see if I linked it. Uh, if not, that I can find it here. So there, the, the project was um, the sustainability goals. They had to make a project um, using one of those sustainability goals. And then from there, they had to present what they, what they found. But let me share one of my students' presentation. And they did their presentations on Canva. So Canva is another great tool also for, for kids to use. So these are all their presentations. And all of them, um, they use Magic School AI to, to come up with their solutions. So they all had a problem. Let me see this one right here. So example for this one, their, their problem was their uh, hunger. And then they, they found right away the problem, but they couldn't find a solution. And then after they found a solution, they were having um, trouble coming up with how they're gonna solve that. And the way that they used it was they went to Magic School AI for students. And I'm not sure if this year it's available for students. I've been pretty sure it is. Okay, right here. So I toggled, this is Magic School AI and then it's Magic School Students. And what they used was, was Reina. They actually did use Reina. And then they also did Research Assistant. So I'm gonna go to Research Assistant. And right here, um, they would type, help me find a solution for 
um, people that are hungry in my community. And once they did that, they, they found a lot of good responses. So let me see if, if it would actually help. So help me come up with the solution for in my community. Okay, so these are some solutions that AI is giving them. Food drives, community gardens, support local farmers, meal packing events, and then after that, it would give them um, like what else they can do, other resources are, and what they could find, which uh, they actually used one of these, community garden, they actually went with community garden. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And this was their, their little presentation. Okay, and where's the community garden? Over here. So their solution was, we will partner up with our school to create a community garden where, where volunteers can grow fresh fruits and vegetables to distribute to families facing food insecurity. So it was a really great tool because in the beginning when, when we started the presentation, um, it was, it was a, like I said, a little bit overwhelming, but with AI, it was a big difference with with all of our with all of our students even the ones that need that extra little help um, AI helped them and I was able to facilitate I was more as a facilitator not just um, there with the students the whole time but there are so many other ways students could use it as well and teachers as well let me go back to my presentation Um, I think that's it. If anyone has any questions or would like me to share more, because like I said, there's so many things you could use AI for, and I, I've used it a couple of times. I love that you have your students using it and trying it out. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And if anybody needs help with that, just reach out to Valentina or I, or it's Stephanie. I know most of you that are here are from her campus, <laughs> but yeah. uh, they can help you set up the magic school tools because the students can't just automatically go to magic school. They do have to, the teacher does have to set up a class mm -hmm. and add the tools that you want your students to use. Yes, it is a couple of steps. Yes, awesome. I love it. Thank you, Stephanie. And yes, like Debbie said, just reach out to me or her. And we're here to support you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. If everybody wants to stick around, we'll do a little door prize drawing. If anybody else has questions for Stephanie, go ahead and ask away. Um, we'll go ahead and I will share my wheel of names. I apologize. I am on the web browser that I normally don't use because my teams wouldn't join. So hopefully, Everybody can see the wheel of names. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle three times. And let's see who our lucky winner is. We want to thank everybody for attending today. We learned a lot. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, I'm great. And I was really happy to share AI because, like I said, I use it so many times. And I want to share it with everyone. <laughs> Yolanda, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here. Yay, you're our lucky door prize winner today. Thank you. So thank you again, everyone. Um, yes, I know uh, um, some teachers like us um, and Stephanie are starting to use AI almost every day. I think I use it every day for something. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you a question. I, I heard, I haven't, I've not tried Gemini, but I heard that people can collaborate on it, just kind of like like on Canva, you know, people working on the, on the same presentation. Can they do that on Gemini? I haven't seen it used, but I'm not sure if the free version will do it. I'm sure it will have to be like the premium version for that. Sounds like uh, it. Okay, no, I have. Yeah, I heard that and I said, ah, oh, I've not hmm. tried it. I don't know how, how if I could. Yeah, but that sounds interesting. 
And then, Gemini, we don't have to play around with ESJ email, so you will have to use your personal email, Google email, to be able to use them. Oh, Gemini. okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I have not tried it. I love, I love ChatGPT. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, sometimes I, I've tried different ones, and you see where you get your best response. You know, I, I use Magic School the most right now. Um, I feel like it gives me good educational, like, an, you know, answers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Just try them out and keep using them. And if yes. you need help with Canva, let us know. Yeah. No, I let tried using it last year, and I said, oh, and now, I, and now that you mentioned that, I went in, and it says invite members. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't do that step, but okay. I will. Uh, I'll talk. I'll reach out to Miss Alfaro. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you again. You. Thanks, everybody. Yolanda will get your door price to you sometime in the next week or two. And Stephanie, thank you so much for presenting today. Yes, of course. I had a quick question. Are you, are you is anyone going to the training tomorrow? Valentine and Sonida I, and I will be there. Are you going? Yes. The, Yay. Awesome. Yep, we'll be there. So look out for us and you can join us. OK. OK. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.